Prepare to die, Earth scum, because it's our Halloween special, and we just watched... Well, okay, we didn't so much watch it as it was beamed into our head, but we just experienced Space Invaders on B-Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bizarre, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Hey guys. Where are we again? <laughs> I don't know, but this strange, seemingly Martian ship seems like a great place to uh, have our Halloween special. Yeah, it does. I. It's like... I don't remember watching the movie, but I know that I have watched this movie. Yeah, we didn't see it because we were, you know, we were just in our teaser in the haunted house. Yeah. And now we're here. Um. And there's been no time passage. This is weird. Chris, can, can I can I address the elephant in the room? <laughs> oh, already. The, what? With well, that? I mean, okay, this is pretty important. Does anyone else's butt hurt? <laughs> Like they've been no, like no, probed. No, no, I'm like, fine. No, I'm fine. I'm yeah. totally fine. I feel great. Never mind. In fact, I feel so great. I would love to say welcome to our Halloween special <laughs> on B Movie Mania. <laughs> I am Jason Hulls, and these uh, this this butt probed guy next to me is Chris Hudson. I'm really glad to be here tonight. I bet we're going to explain that accent later. Um, Saving it for the podcast. Also huddled around uh, in this weird Martian ship is Mike Hayes. Oh, hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> oh, please tell me that's not going to happen the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it. Oh, what do you mean, Jake? Why don't the problem is? <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, um, we experienced the movie Space Invaders. <laughs> right? Experience yes. is right. Yes. Do we address the other... Ele- I, I can't believe I'm going to say it. Do we ex- do we address the other elephant in the room <laughs> and remind our listeners that Paul is not here with us? Paul's gone. Yeah, he's, he's I mean, gone. Mike thought he was a ghost or something, but... Uh. Mm. Yeah. I don't see the big difference between ghost and jetpack. It's basically the same thing. But we loved him. Oh, shit! It just clicked that every time someone says elephant in the room, there's a sound effect that gets edited in. I forgot about that. That just clicked. That just That's why you were upset about it. I didn't... I quit. I, I I'm forgot. Gonna, I need to... Pass me a jetpack. Pass me no, a jetpack. No, we're out of jetpacks. So, <clears throat> Space Invaders. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a 1990 movie directed by Patrick Reed Johnson. It's... About these little Martians that are waging an intergalactic war, and they some of them get separated from their fleet, and they hear War of the Worlds being broadcasted, and they think the fight has taken to Earth. So they go to Earth to destroy all humans. Is pretty yeah. much the idea. It's a and it's a big mistake. So um, it's a, yeah. it's, a it's, so, it's aimed for children. Jay, it's a children's Jay, film. Big mistake. Would that be a good way to describe this movie? Boom. <laughs> Ouch. Hot take. Whoa. Let's get to some quick takes. Quick takes! Quick takes! Well, Chris, uh, why don't why don't you go first? Well, I'd love to go first and talk about everyone's favorite alien. They're Martian who talks a lot like Jack Nicholson. Kids, 3D and driving just don't mix. So I'm here doing my Jack Nicholson impression impression. It sounds kind of like a sweet southern bell sometimes. That wasn't the you mean you you mean Jack Nicholson didn't voice that alien? <laughs> hard to believe, isn't it? It is hard to believe. Jay, this is a very <laughs> this is a very hard to handle truth. You can't handle it. Yeah. So, uh I'm going to assume that was your quick take or Quick takes. It's a bit okay. lengthy. Uh, oh, Mike, Mike, what do you got? Space Invaders is a movie only a 9-year-old could love. 
<laughs> oh boy. Well, yeah, you know, I can't my as far as mine, I can't necessarily disagree with that cuz I was pretty young when I watched this. Um <laughs> it it's got some fun parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we'll, see, we'll get into that. Yeah. We'll get into that. Yeah, there's some um, there's some fun like everyone's names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are the names? Big Bean. Well, well, the ta- yeah, Big town's, Bean, Illinois. The town's Big Bean, which is not a real town. Just so, so don't worry about googling it. It doesn't exist. Wait a minute. What? I thought Chris was from Big Bean. Uh, uh, I'm not saying. Oh uh, boy. Uh, <laughs> no, we got <laughs> normal people like uh, Wrench Mueller is someone's name. Uh, someone's name is is Clam Dicker. Clam Becker. That's Clam Becker. Clam, yeah, yeah. Clam, Clam Becker. Becker. Clam Becker. But then there are aliens. No, our dep- the deputy's name is Deputy Russell Pillsbury, and he does look like the Pillsbury Doughboy, so that was intentional. <laughs> and, and, and the gas station attendant, Vern. You can't forget about Vern. Well, Vern's there. Vern, but was, Vern was great. Vern was great. Vern was great. Vern but, was awesome. guys, and I couldn't tell you which one was which, but we had Captain Bipto. Oh, yeah. Corporal Pez. Dr. <laughs> Ziploc. And Lieutenant Gigglywig. Those are our aliens. <laughs> but you forgot yeah. about the Jack Nicholson one. He's one of those, I think. I think it was or was he called Blazo something else? Blast off or some bullshit. Oh, had, or yeah, something that's like right. That. There was five of them. I forgot. Yeah. They were all split up for some reason throughout the movie, and it was very confusing. Yeah, they didn't really get into the names very yeah. much. Yeah, and the three that the 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 three that were split off were completely interchangeable. Oh yeah. Well, except oh for, yeah. There was the scientist one. The scientist one had like electric eyes and stuff or whatever, and he was Doctor Ziploc. That's the only one I can and he tell had you. A, kind of a German <laughs> accent going on. He talked like like this. <laughs> God, they were all so okay. Continue, They're please. They're cute though. Yeah, the, 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 it looked good. Like I'll say right up front, the like costumes looked great, uh, and like. The spaceship stuff looked good. Like oh, the yeah, special the effects, effects were great. for what it, not even just for what it was. Like I don't know. We watched it on YouTube, well, so how? Well, just whatever. Uh, j- just so you guys know, the guy in charge of visual effects uh, did a lot of stuff for the Star Wars prequels, and invented Photoshop. No. Yeah. Hey, so, while we're talking fake facts, did you know yeah, that it's um, a real fact? <laughs> you got. You really can't handle the truth, can you? The architect of the uh, the Bean, the Chicago Bean got the idea for it from this movie because the town <laughs> was being big bean. <laughs> now that really sounds like a fake fact. No, I believe that 100%. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not true at all. Oh. Over with my Photoshop anecdote? Come on. Chris, where do we start this movie? Where does the plot start? Well, uh, the plot starts <laughs> uh, with the Imperial Atomic Space Navy, which, hey, Marsh, every Martian should have their own Imperial Atomic Space Navy. And they're about to uh, go to war with the Arcturans, I believe. Yeah, I mean, very in media rest, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I gotta say, this this shot looked really good. We were talking about it, and uh, yeah, the, the, the model work is pretty good. The costumes are great. And uh, the Enforcer drones that, you know, kill everyone on your own side because you're not doing well enough in war. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it looked good. <laughs> Not really sure how that really helps you win. That's encouragement. Yeah, that's really the villain of the film. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like uh, the assassin look droid from uh, yeah. Empire, right? Yeah. Kind yeah. of yeah. that look. Yeah. yeah. Droid. I, I'm surprised you guys caught any of the words that happened at this point, because for me, it took me a bit to get into understanding these these alien accents, just because they're all like, <laughs> yeah, I'm talking like this, and I'm talking like this, you know, this like, fucking whatever. And it's like when you're listening to, like, when I'm listening to watch, like, a British TV show, sometimes it'll take me a minute or two to well, get into the accent. Like, I, Mike, I think mm-hmm. it's mostly because we're used to listening to you talk, and you have a very yeah. similar accent and cadence. In well, I don't know what yeah, you I mean. Don't know if you... I would never talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the aliens are, um, the, they're, they're sort of taskmasters, these large assassin enforcer drone things. They're, they're making sure that the Martians are warring appropriately. Yeah. yeah. You can't... And in the beginning, we see one nuke a Martian. Yeah, and it's like a big pile of crusty bones. Think yeah, like... just, yeah, and the Martians are the little green people. Yeah. They're like the little green guys with antennas. Yeah, and these are like rubber suit outfits. Like They're like full body-ish looking costumes. And most of them are yes. played by Ewoks. Which is weird, but which, which of, yeah sounds extra warm to have like an Ewok <laughs> costume on and then also one of these on. That's, that's well, a bit it, rough. Helped, it helped fill out the Martians. So we zip down to Big Bean, Illinois. Mm-hmm. 
um, a place that we've all been. Well, we are from Illinois, so yeah, that that we've all been to Big Bean. Yeah, and I mean, at this point now, everyone in the podcast is from Illinois. Yeah. Oh, we got rid yes, of that thanks, fucker that, that wasn't. <laughs> yeah. The guy who left Illinois. And and unlike a new member of the podcast, there is a new sheriff in town at Big Bean. Oh, John Candy? Oh, yeah, there is. Uh, no, the guy, no. The, there John is a low-rent John Candy, though, yes, the deputy. Yeah, oh, yeah. And he's there to catch Big Bean's first speeder. God. Because they just got their first, what is it? It's an off-ramp, right? Or an on-ramp? Yeah, they got an off-ramp. They, they're yeah. connected to the highway now? Oh, yeah. Connected so, to the rest of the country. Russell, yeah, Russell Pillsbury is excited <laughs> to sit out by the highway on Halloween. We uh, we then warp over to um, the Farmer's Trust, where an old man with a shotgun is ready to throw down. Yeah, this movie has everything you need for like a small town, like stereotypical movie. There's the a new sheriff. There's a crotchety old man that has got a shotgun that he's just gonna fucking shoot someone, and just like it, there's there's it's great. There's so many like cliches in it. It's perfect. Let me just say right up front, this was probably one of the stronger elements I felt. I don't know how you guys feel. If you would agree, I feel like the pacing of the movie was actually pretty quick. Oh God, Jay, no, 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 not quick at all. It might, it maybe was because it was an hour and forty minutes long. So no matter what pace it was, I would have felt like it was slowing down. <laughs> but, okay. Um, so we don't agree with that. The <laughs> okay. beginning. Okay, fine. I'll give you the beginning. But like, there's a lot of scenes. Like it zips around. There's a lot of characters. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Nah, there is no? a lot of stuff going on. You're right. There is a lot of stuff. I just don't know how much. It, it wanted me to care, but there's a lot. I'm sorry, but there was a lot of this. I was just like, I this you don't. They, they needed to cut like 20 minutes out of this thing. Now, do you think that the tone was a little weird? Because you know, it's sort of on that cusp of kids movie, but they do like swear. A life a bitch. And there's some. Uh, so, uh, some more advanced con, you know, just yeah. even talking yeah. about the space time continuum and stuff like that, stuff that little kids aren't really going to get, you know, I don't, so I feel like it was kind of in that weird gray area of sort of PG 13 land, but if they, they could have gone just a little bit further with it, it would have been a really fun rated R movie. Oh, oh, you wanted to make this to- rated R. Oh, uh, I think that would have been awesome. Hmm. But. Well, hey, why stop there? Why not just go all the way and make it a porno? Let's go triple X <laughs> spaced invaders. Wow. Come on. Wow. Why limit no. yourself, Jay? Why cater to what your audience wants? Chris, Chris, Chris. <laughs> just tell me what happens at uh, the Farmer's Trust with Wrench Mueller and Clem Becker, please. <laughs> so Wrench Mueller shows up with a shotgun ready to scare Clem Becker because he's going to foreclose on his farm. You know, lots. it's a... It's on the border of the 80s movies. There's always somebody's farm in trouble in these sorts of movies. And, of course. Uh, and Clem Becker, not Clam Baker. That's Clem Becker. Clem Becker yeah. uh, comes out and introduces <laughs> himself to the sheriff. We got a new sheriff in town whose name I totally don't remember. Uh, and, uh, sheriff Hoxley. Remember either. Yeah. Sheriff Hoxley. Hoxley? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah, they don't do a good job with the names. No, they don't, terrible. They don't really... Names, yeah. yeah. But it turns out, though, that the sheriff, we find out later... Is the little girl from Jurassic Park her father? Yes. Oh. Which I think could mean that the two movies are connected. Totally. There's nothing totally. to say that they're not. That's right. Yeah. So this, this happens in the Jurassic Park universe. You could totally have. And it. I can't wait to see Steven Chris Pratt. Spielberg made War of the Worlds. Oh, that's right. He did. He also made. Okay. Uh, uh, fuck. Why can't I think of it? The third kind movie. <laughs> Shit. A Close Encounters. Yes, which was a reference with the uh, um, the the deputy. He's you, It's hard to see, but he's got half of his face is sunburned, which is oh, a reference yeah. to yeah, uh, right. what happens to Dreyfus in uh, Dreyfus, yeah. Close Encounters. There's an asshole taking everyone's farms before their crops are, are harvested. Everyone's fields look pretty looks pretty shitty for this late in the growing season. Well, it was shot in California, so yeah. I mean. There's that. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, like, the, the whole thing is, like, it sounds like the whole, a lot of the farms have been, like, not had a good season, and this guy, uh, uh, Clem Becker. Wrench, Wrench Mueller, Wrench Mueller. It, is super, super poor. In fact, at some point in the movie, he goes to, he, he gets a box of dog treats out, realizes there's only one, and then breaks it in half, gives half to the dog, then eats the other half. So that's his dinner, I the guess. The dog's name is Jim. Oh, yeah, we got Jim the dog. Jim the dog. 
But yeah, everyone he, every, <laughs> he's really poor, and so like Clan Becker's busting his balls. He's he's supposed to be able to get his like deed or whatever and take his take his farm and stuff. And it's a real shitty move, uh, and it's real sad. It's very sad. Okay, so we've got uh, the little girl from Jurassic Park, Kathy. She's going. To, she's gonna. She's got a sweet alien costume. It's amazing. Right after that scene is where we find out just how effective the Martian Navy really is. Well, how effective are they? Oh, they suck. Sir, the Arcturans have destroyed the remainder of the fleet! Yeah, they're not very good at war. Yeah, the Arcturans totally kick their asses. Which, by the way, we never see an Arcturan. We have no, no idea what Arcturan no. is or where that they is. Could, they, could sh they could show up in a sequel with Chris Pratt, and we'd have no idea that was an Arcturan. <laughs> Give it to They're me, Chrissy. dinosaurs. Give it to me. They are dinosaurs. The but, Arcturans cut, shot their DNA into amber down <laughs> onto an island. That's it. Where an old man discovered it. Jay, <laughs> Jay, did you say shoot their DNA into amber? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, uh, anyway, what happens oh, next? Oh, yeah. Right. We need to stop there. All right. War of the Worlds. We get War of the Worlds and some older folks talking about the how it affected them when they were younger. Uh, we see Halloween around town. Um, the the Martians. This is the big thing. The Martians, their little, uh, you know, radar dish picks up War of the Worlds. They think, oh, the fleet's on Earth. We're fighting Earthlings now. Let's go kill them. They, yeah, they crash down and they, they're following Earth because they think the, they're invading Earth now or whatever it is, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And my notes say this, and we keep referencing notes, but guys, 42% of my notes just say something along the lines of the asshole John Candy deputy just wants to <laughs> fucking give a speeding ticket so damn bad. So it's bad. Just, it, it, anytime <laughs> it cuts to him, he's just like rubbing his, his radar gun like it's a big old dick, and he's just, let me <laughs> let me give it to someone. You, let me do you know, it. And, Who's the first? And, and you know what's even better is that he's recording it so he can either up, he can upload it to either yeah, YouTube he is. Or, or YouTube or Pornhub. Yeah, or it's YouTube. probably Pornhub. Maybe both. <laughs> <laughs> he does say, he does talk to his mom on the camera, so I wonder if that's like a fetish Ooh, on Pornhub of yeah. like oh, where they think you're, yeah. they call you mom. I'm gonna have to look that up later. Oh, writing no, that no, down. no, yeah, baby, uh, yeah, fuck yeah. real estate or sibling porn. <laughs> writing this one down <laughs> <laughs> on my whiteboard. I can type it out for you. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so the, the the aliens crash into the into Wrench Mueller's barn, Jay. Yes, they do. They do. They go real fast past <laughs> the. Uh, oh yeah! It's like Pills, it's like past three Pillsbury. Three thousand miles per hour. Watch now as I teach this automotive scofflaw lesson in motor vehicular responsibility. Nobody gets away with going three thousand miles per hour in a fifty-five mile an hour. We got so we have all the the aliens. They get off the ship, and they have no idea what Earth is like. They think there might be minefields. We get introduced to this cute little robot guy who's pretty instrumental throughout the movie. He's got, like, a little round, you know, head, and he's, like, a little R2-D2 kind of guy. Yeah, he's like the Porg of the movie. Also, Jay? Yes, yes. Why does one of the aliens sound like a German? That was good. Yeah, Jesus That Christ. was pretty Did good. Did you voice everyone in this? Every, yeah, everyone. Even, especially Russell Pillsbury. Wow. Wait, what? <laughs> Give us your best Russell Pillsbury <laughs> impression when he's trying to get a speeder. Hot diggity dog! <laughs> All right, at least it was quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay, so the, the aliens fire the little drone. They, the little robot's supposed to see if a road is a minefield. Hey, nobody answered my question. What? What was your question? Why does one of the aliens sound like a German? It certainly is green here. Perhaps our camouflage is uh, somewhat inappropriate. Be because he's a scientist. Oh, yeah. Right, that's... I mean, that's... Why does the other one sound like Jack Nicholson? Yeah. Why does he sound like Jack Nicholson? Where, where, why do they wear Lakers shirts? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> I had to wrote that down later. Why the hell does the yeah. Jack Nicholson alien wear a Lakers shirt? And what? aviator wait, wait. sunglasses. Wait, 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 wait. Did he actually have a Lakers jersey on? He did, yes. A Lakers shirt, yes. Yeah. That's amazing. Because, yeah. I mean, obviously that's because it's Jack Nicholson, who's yeah. famous for being courtside at Lakers games. That's like, right. Not, is that another? Not joking. That's a thing. That's amazing. That's I thing. didn't catch yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so yeah, so there, there's. I mean, they also like later on they sing, "Home on the Range." So I mean, there's God, the, the Martians. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's definitely for a nine-year-old. Give me a right. home where the asteroids right. roam <laughs> and the gleaves and the buzzy mugs play. <laughs> where gravity's low and the water is slow and the desert winds blow you away. Mars, Mars is my home where everyone's short just like me. I wish I was where there's not so much air and two moons would shine down upon me. Very oh. nice. <laughs> so anyway, so the the Martians the Martians are exploring and Captain Bipto walks out onto a road and gets nailed, absolutely nailed by a car. It's great. First casualty of this R-rated children's film. <laughs> if only. Except, of course, he doesn't die. And then, but then we get we get uh, uh, the sheriff. We get introduced to Vern, who's dressed as Zorro, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, Zorro has a hat, great. though. Zorro has a hat. I enjoyed Vern, and you guys Vern can't was, take that away from no, me. No, Vern, Vern probably I, the best thing about the movie. I got a real like we wish this was Ernest kind of vibe, which is maybe why they yeah. called him Vern. Oh yeah, yeah. Could oh, very point, much could be. Jim Vardy would have been fantastic um, in that role. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. And probably underused. If it was Jim Varney, like... Oh, yeah. People would be yeah. like, why why is he? does he have this little role? Anyway, yeah. so Kathy from Jurassic Park is sitting outside her little Halloween party. She's uh -huh. not fitting in because she's new to town. Yeah. And she meets a friend. Uh-huh. This little boy named Brian who's dressed as a duck. No, he's not. It's adorable. It's not he's dressed so as a duck. He's so adorable. What? He's, he's a little duck. He's, I know he is, but, and it's an amazing costume, and I kind of want to dress up as him for Halloween now, but <laughs> it's a bu giant orange, like, I mean, I understand it's supposed to be a homemade one, right? Like, his mom made him the outfit. So, like, it's just, yeah. like, orange, puffy bed sheet kind of thing, but his head's blue, and his body's orange, and is that what a duck looks like? I I just yes, feel like I've never Mike. seen a blue and orange what duck. Kind of, where do you, what kind of ducks are you looking at? I guess not those kind. He looked like a goddamn. He he had a bill and some web feet. Some the flippers. bill yeah. was awesome. It was yeah. an adorable friendship. It was an adorable. Oh, I loved it. No, they were very good in the movie together. Meanwhile, to contrast <laughs> that, Clem Becker has a hot woman and a cold beer, <laughs> and he needs gas fast. Oh yeah, he does. Come on, Vern, hurry it up! I got a cold beer and a hot woman, and I'm trying to keep. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys caught this, but there are several very subtle references throughout the movie to Clem Becker being a butthead. You butthead. What do you mean and a butthead? I intend a, he's a butthead. Like, Clem oh, yeah, Becker's yeah. a butthead. Right. No, but what does Very that mean? He's a butthead a lot. Wait, did he? I, I'll get into it more throughout the, this episode. I'm excited. Episode. Yeah. Th Jay, but, does uh, it have anything to do with the actor who played Clem Becker voicing Grimlock from the Transformers? That's not true. That is another true thing. Just like wow. my Photoshop thing. Totally That's going to be my new thing this whole like season. I'm just going <laughs> to deny everything. I'm going to question truth. Jay, are you saying I can't handle the truth? That's what I'm saying. All right, so Clam Baker, Baker. That's Clam Baker. Comes flying into the gas station. It's a full service thing, so Vern is always like helping whoever pulls in, right? That's kind of integral to his role. And uh, so, Glenn, you know, Clam Baker's like sloshing around a beer in his hand, and then they find Sergeant Bipto or whatever his name is, Captain Bipto, stuck to the grill of the truck. We don't get to see it, <laughs> but they have to like pry him off, and apparently he's yeah. still alive. So these 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 uh, aliens are malleable. Well, yeah. Well, we don't know it at the time, though. We don't know it at the time because no, we uh, think he's dead. Yeah, <clears throat> think he's dead. Yeah. But, and this is the first point in time, by the way, where Vern calls him a butthead. Just saying. <laughs> okay. You, okay. Know, All right. you know, I really, we you know what I've loved most about this episode is every time we get Clam Baker's That's name wrong, Clam we put in the clip of oh Clam, Clam Becker no, saying his no. name correctly. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> I'm not allowing you to <laughs> make Damn me it. edit in sounds throughout this whole thing. <laughs> you know, although I, I've got a serious question here. If it's around this point, that why isn't the government here picking through the remains of the spaceship? Because the government well, doesn't exist. Well, it's been 15 exist. minutes. Yeah, come on. You're telling me the men in black wouldn't know about this by now. They can't pick up a spaceship at 3,000 miles an hour on their radar guns. I don't know. Tweet Will Smith. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
All right, so, okay, the Martians assault uh, a children's party at this point. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's... Prepare to die, Earth scum! Prepare to die, Earth scum! And there's, like, a Midwestern mom. Just a real, <laughs> like, Chicago sc- suburb mom. <laughs> <laughs> that, and okay, you guys. Di- I feel like I'm on the defense here. You guys didn't think that was funny. Which like, what <laughs> interaction between the Martians and the mom? No, that was great. <laughs> that was great. I mean, right. but, I would have thought it was better if I were ten. But you know, of course. So the, everybody's going out trick or treating, and the kids are coming out of the house, and the, the, you've got like the mom who's wrangling all of them, and the Martians are short, so like the Martians are ready to throw down, and she's like, "Nope, in the car," and <laughs> <Yeah>. they, <laughs> so they all have to get into the car and go trick or treating. Yeah, no, it's good. Like, and then they're in the car, and they're like sass talking the mom, and she's not having any of it. And it's great. Oh, that's one of my favorite moments. I mean, oh, it's it's amazing. very rude to the mom, yeah. but it was funny. It was really um, funny. Yes, and uh, but before the, before the the sass comes, we have Bipto gets up, and we see Vern is is drawing a, at the gas station by himself. He's drawing a big, like giant farm mech oh. that can irrigate all of the fields at the same time. Yeah, he's like a genius. Everybody's yeah, farm. The old, yeah, the old farm zoid. Yeah, the farm. Mm-hmm. He's drawing the farm zoid, which is like four stories tall. And irrigates everything, like, from the Everything. <laughs> and Bipto yeah. clamps this collar onto him and turns him into a slave. Yeah, a little robo-slave. Now, and then from then on, yeah. he talks like this, he talks like this, he talks like this, he talks like this. Which is still great. Also like this. The smell of battery acid makes me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's very, like, there's a lot of gusto. Yeah, mine wasn't a very yeah, good impression. Yeah. Um, but, Jay, no, okay, so that car scene, what, what I found that sometimes fails in the kids' movies. And you know I love me a, a good, bad kids' movie. Of course. Um, <laughs> but there was a couple times in this when the logic in it is so ridiculous that it's just like, <laughs> even I can't suspend my disbelief. Because when the sure. aliens shoot a missile launcher out the window... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the last straw. Okay, but first, like, the, the aliens are seriously sass-talking the mom, right? Yeah. And uh, they, they, they throw down a, a pretty sick burn on her here. When someone points a quad vectored <laughs> hyperthermic cosmo blaster at you, it's a fair bet you're about to become toast. Will you please sit down and be quiet? <laughs> or perhaps in your case, a whole loaf of toast. <laughs> yeah. And so she's had enough. Like, the, the kids have gone trick or treating at this point. Um,. The, the Clem Becker, they go to Clem Becker's house, and oh, Chris, yeah. who's he dressed like? Well, well, as I was going to say, that this is the third Hulk Hogan movie we've covered on this podcast. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. Wait, 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 wait. Clem Becker. And he passes oh, out cigarettes as candy yes. to the kids. Yes. Yeah. Listen, I don't, I would argue, I don't know if that was Hulk Hogan. Oh, I that think, was totally Hulk Hogan. No, that was, I'm almost positive of Sterling Golden. <laughs> right? No? What? Hulk Hogan's original no. wrestling name? Well, oh, fuck you okay. guys. Uh, we just did a wrestling <laughs> podcast two two times ago. I find out that he's got an original name called Sterling Golden, and he's wearing a golden outfit because Hulk Hogan's dressed up just like Hulk Hogan in this movie, but he's wearing a golden outfit all over. So I thought, oh, it's Sterling Golden. Check that out. And you fuckers just let it go. Oh, Mike, you know what? That, the wor- Mike, the work you just did there, that's possibly more adorable than the entire movie. Oh, just <laughs> fuck you. Fuck off. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Mike did wrestling research. God damn it. <laughs> well, you, you got you to gotta look up the wrestling research when you watch Spaced Invaders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two, two episodes behind, Mike. Oh, God. But yeah, okay. So, so uh, Kathy, for some reason, Jurassic Park Kathy, like, decides to try to uh, defend the, the Martians when they're in the car with the trick-or-treating. Because the little robot drone cute thing it tells her pretty much through images that they're from space. So she's tripped out. And she says they're her cousins, and so that buys them some time. They shoot a missile out of the window, and she's like, that's it, get out of the... So everybody gets out. So the aliens get out and go their own way, and Kathy follows them. And something I noticed, which I found odd, is that Kathy doesn't interact like through dialogue with the Martians until very late in the movie, despite defending them and following them around. Huh. I didn't notice that. It was, was almost yeah. like it was almost like how Kathy, a few years later, didn't really interact <laughs> or defend the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Until you mean much the Arcturans? The I'm sorry, the Arcturans. <laughs> God. 
So they go on their own way. Uh, we did. There is a scene where where we cut back to Jack Jack Nicholson alien Jack alien, and he, I just call him Jack. He he's yeah. back at like. The spaceship, like the three left, yeah. he said the spaceship, and we cut back to him at some point, and he's just singing along to fucking Martian music, <laughs> Martian and it, music. <laughs> I can't even begin to describe what it sounds like. <laughs> we should play a clip right here. <laughs> this is also where Jack gets his uh, his speeding ticket. Yes, oh, that's finally true. Finally catches up to him. Great, yes. yeah. there goes my insurance. License, no registration, no plates, no headlights, no taillights, no wheels, and I clocked you going 3,000 miles per hour. That's 2,945 miles an hour in excess of the posted limit. Ain't life a bitch. Ain't life a bitch. That's what I'm but talking there we go. about. Like, there was some swearing. It's, that's, a, that's a little swearing yeah. in a kid's movie. I don't know. Maybe well, it was edgy. I don't know. It's Jack, it's Jack Nicholson. You can't you gotta can't, get a little swearing in. You can't put a muzzle on old Jackie. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so so Russell Pillsbury gets knocked out because uh, Wrench Mueller, the farmer who owns the barn, had rigged up this whole thing so that when a Martian came out of the ship, he would get hit with a hay bale. Jack sees through it immediately, and it's a, it's a very sort of wily e. coyote trap. With a Zagnut candy bar, and nobody, not even Martians, like Zagnuts. Ugh. Russell Pillsbury steps on it and gets hit in the face and gets knocked out. Is it just me, or is Jack the smartest of the Martians? Oh, easily. Okay. Easily. Okay. Because this, this is where also Jack figures out that it's not real. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. It's very early that he figures out that, yep. like, hey, we War heard of War the of the Worlds. That's a whole fake thing. Oops. Yeah. And he has to figure out a way to tell the others who are ready for war. And it's apparently some sort of a legend, because later in the movie, he's talking to, to Jurassic Park girl, and he's like, you ever heard about War of the Worlds? <laughs> and then, like, then we cut to the other aliens once they figure out what it is, and they're screaming and freaking out, because they, oh, shit, it's just that old War of the Worlds bit. We get the the combat drone, the uh, in, the evil enforcer drone thingy shoots Jack and knocks him out and then that allows the farmer to kind of like snap some pictures and scoop him up and they he's going to take him into town to like show everybody at the VFW and you know it's funny like really one of the main characters is the sheriff and we really haven't talked about him very much he's so, really yeah. pretty bland yeah really. just I mean, going to say yeah there's it's yeah, much it is weird. With him. He is kind of like he's supposed to be. I guess maybe not the main drive, right? The little girl is in the aliens is supposed to be the main drive, but yeah. the sheriff is really kind of like something this thing like swings around on too. Yeah, he's the hero that can actually do something. But well, he's but, yeah, he's kind of you, you know. Why don't you go tell that little girl that Jay? Yeah, but Clem Clem Becker is way more interesting. the The little kid, the little kid in the duck costume is way better. Despite yeah, the kid in the duck costume is time. fucking amazing. He, because he's right. adorable. <laughs> yeah. So so the next thing that kind of shows up is there's a, like all the like parents in town are all dressed up in their costumes, but they're at like the town square freaking out about what's or they're being told what's going on and told not to freak out. But of course they're freaking out. Right. Yeah, well, and the sheriff backs up Wrenchmuller's story. Yes. Like, Jack wakes yeah. up out of the back of the truck and takes off. Yeah. So there's no Martian when he tries to show everybody. But the sheriff's like, no, it's true. Like, I've seen evidence. This is really happening. And then just panic ensues. Yeah. But Ducky, this is this is one of my favorite parts. Ducky <laughs> sees him run. So Ducky follows him and then, <laughs> and then grabs part. a trash can lid <laughs> and just frisbees it at Jack and just knocks him out cold. I was hoping mm. someone would mention that. It's so never good. mess, never mess with a frisbee champion. No, and <laughs> and little ducky also gives a real menacing threat, which is I'm a carnivorous duck, and I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> That's real good. That's very great. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's a good bet. So, uh, Jack agrees to take Brian the duck uh, to the spaceship because they see the Enforcer drone is coming through the streets and, the, and is going to get them. And uh, the Martians, the other Martians, set up this whole thing to communicate through the TVs in a nearby store, and they decide to blow up the new off-ramp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do like right. that bit. The oh. Also, like, the people were scared. Yeah, the people were scared until they got their new off-ramp blown up. <laughs> and then they're they're ready to fight. 
But what about when they tried to destroy the uh, the missile silo? Yes. Oh, the missile silos. Yeah. Chris, did you know that Big Bean, where you're from, had oh, missile yeah, yeah. silos? I, I did not. I mean, there are those two corn silos out just outside of town near the off-ramp filled oh. with corn. That if, 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 if someone were to heat up the, cor- the silo, <laughs> all that corn would surely pop. Yeah, that's how it works. Oh. <laughs> well, how would a group of Martians buried under popcorn escape? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they fucking eat their way out of a giant pop- like, guys, Oh, God, I want popcorn so bad right now. We actually get a little bit of uh, commentary, which is probably more relevant today than it was when this movie was shot. I don't know if you guys noticed this. But, um, you know, the townspeople are all loaded up with their, their trucks and their shotguns. Uh-huh. The Martians are trying to get back to their ship. Oh, no. Okay? Okay. And so Pillsbury and the sheriff are uh, in the car together, and the sheriff makes a... Because he's a new sheriff, right? We said that. Yeah. The sheriff makes a comment. This kind of thing isn't supposed to happen in small towns. I moved out here to get away from things like this. And Russell Pillsbury says... <laughs> This happened a lot in Chicago? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a pretty good mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. And you know what? It does. I mean, I yeah. had I, I ate my way out of a huge pile of popcorn just to be here tonight. I'm, I'm about to, after this. I passed a little group of Martians on the way home from work. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So, it's not even Halloween. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, it is Halloween. It is Halloween. It's a total Halloween <laughs> special. <laughs> We're well, totally recording this on Halloween and releasing it. Guys, guys, Halloween. guys, it's really hard to tell even what time it is. We are on this weird alien craft, so it is hard to really kind of figure out when yeah. it is. So, What better time to talk about uh, an alien invasion movie on Halloween than when you're trapped on a say, alien spaceship? It, it weirdly yeah. works out very well. It works out really well. So, so, guys, the next part is my favorite part, I think, of the movie. Oh, then you should talk about it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the three aliens that are on their... Are, are on are grouped together, uh, can't get back to their ship, but they realize Doctor Ziploc realizes he has a, a, a device that will make the ship autopilot come to him, come to them. Oh, so, yeah. so he pushes the button, and and Jack and Jurassic Girl are hanging out on on the ship, and it's not ready to go. It's broken. Like. Like, yeah. we learned earlier that, you know, it's torqued out digifram, the mega spaz redundancy pile is on the blink, and it's bruised their boo-boo. So, like, it wow. won't work because of all that. It's um, bruised their boo-boo. <laughs> so, so it's, so, it's, it's such, it lands really well, this bit, where the ship's not ready to fly, but it starts going anyway. It takes off, and it starts rocketing out to where they are, and then it just crashes. <laughs> and, oh, dude. And then is this it, where the barn just, I mean, straight up explodes. explodes? Yes, absolutely. It was an amazing explosion. It was great. I told you. This is the guy who created Photoshop, visual effects yeah. supervisor. It, Come on. All right, all right. It bursts out the thing, out of the barn. It flies up kind of in the air, then slams to the ground and crash. And then, and then this thing won't stop. It slowly it gets its little power again, then boom, shoots off into the air again, and then slams on the ground again. It just can't get anywhere, and it's fucking the stupidest but best bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and to like make the ship stop, Jack has to shoot it. Yeah, well, he takes and, uh, like a shotgun out or something. It's amazing. Yeah. When I say whoa, I mean whoa. And he has to shoot it. Give me mother, I have to throw away my fins. <laughs> that that may have been the duck kid. But yeah, that I think was the duck well kid that said too. that. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, but pretty much any voice, it, any yeah. act that works with anything. Yeah. Well, it's about here where I thought that the we're, we're gonna hit the end of this movie. Any. Oh my now. god, I have a note right here for that too. Yeah. But Jay, what <laughs> were you what? gonna say? What's happening next? No, no, no. Go ahead. Well, there's a standoff with the aliens, and there's a big. Uh, ending, right? Like, this is where they have a donut of destruction. They're going to take out the aliens. They're going to take out all the humans because yeah. they're back at the ship. This is a big showdown. The, sh- the ship is in the middle of nowhere and the, the humans roll up. There's definitely not 40 minutes left of this movie. There's uh, no possible there way. There could be over half an hour left. You looked at the runtime of this film and where you were at in it and you said... What the hell is that? What the hell is that? I 100% looked here too. I went, how much is left? Click, pause. Oh, 35 fucking minutes? Okay. Where are we going from here, movie? Let's see where this happens. And then you said, what the 
hell is that? What <laughs> yes. the hell is that? You guys know what I'm getting at, right? Like the, the one town's person who says, what the hell is that? Like four times in the movie. <laughs> I didn't know that. And that's that. pretty much, oh my God, are you serious? It's He keeps saying it over and over again. I kind of say it one time. No, he says it like four times and it's oh, like God. his only line in the movie. Getting back to this donut of destruction that's going to surely end this movie. Um, I just want to say that for an extremely advanced race of beings, their technology is shitty. None of it works. <laughs> None of it at all works. That's why they didn't beat the dinosaurs. Uh, that's true. Yeah, That makes yeah, sense. That explains a lot, yeah. You know, they should have just made a bunch of Enforcer drones and sent those to the dinosaurs, because those seem to work pretty well. Yes. So th what is the Donut of Destruction? Somebody somebody, tell us what the Donut of Destruction is. It's a, it's an inner tube that they've wrapped about themselves. The, the Martians come out of the ship in the Donut of Destruction, and uh, what's the threat here? They're going to blow up everyone. They're going to blow up everyone. Yeah. Not just everyone, the Earth. The Earth. Well, yeah, yeah. And so... Clem Becker, who's dressed like Hulk Hogan, says, Golden. What about your ship? Won't it be obliterated too? And it seems that they forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, they just start freaking out. Now, now, what are we gonna do? I don't know. We're gonna we're destroy all our. We're fucked. We're fucked. We're fucked. We're fucked. So they can't do that. Oh, they even tried to do it anyway. One of the guys goes, Give me that. Let me do it. And then he does it and it just breaks. It yeah, doesn't it break. And they run, right? They just take off. Um, th I did notice this is also the part when the when the aliens run, uh, Russell Pillsbury is begins asking the townspeople for bazookas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> if, if anybody has a bazooka, um, the sheriff pretty much just takes everybody home. It's a weird resolution to the standoff because the Martians run, and the sheriff takes Jurassic Park Kathy, his daughter, home, along with the duck kid. And the old man Wrenchmuller just pretty much takes everybody home. <laughs> old man Wrenchmuller just sounds so stupid. <laughs> but this is where we get the uh, campfire scene. And this the, is where the, the song. Range. So if you want to right. hear that, rewind about half an hour and you can hear me sing it again. Yeah. Jurassic Park Kathy pleads with her father and says that the aliens aren't bad, they're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's pretty upset. So she wants she wants the sheriff to help. And then the little uh, cute drone thing shows up to take Kathy to the Martians. Does the little cute drone thing actually do anything? I was just so... It seemed like such an afterthought. He's kind of a little exposition bot. Yeah. Yeah, I really. So. That's a good description. He communicates what's happening with the Martians to the humans. Oh, yeah. To oh, Kathy. And I forgot, it did get Captain, Captain Bipto killed. Well, not kill, but run over. Yeah. So what? So the sheriff tries to call the authorities. They're like, we don't have, we don't take UFO reportings, but we do have psych, we have to have psychiatrist phone numbers. Kathy and uh, the duck boy go to find the Martians. And this is where Bipto calls Verndroid and <laughs> wants to unleash the machine. The mm, farm. Yeah. We yeah, know yeah. the machine, the farmzoid. Now, I love this earlier on, uh, Clem Becker, when he was getting uh, gas before they got Captain Bipto off the uh, grill of his truck, talks about, hey, hey, is my caddy ready? And Vern says, ah, next week, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He totally lied because the caddy is definitely ready. And those keys oh, are... Shit. And those keys, Jay, you mentioned this earlier, the butthead reference. Oh, yeah, baby. The keys are hanging on a, on a board. Really? With a bunch of other keys. Yeah. And above Clem Becker's car keys... It says butthead. How did I not catch all the butthead bits? <laughs> There's a lot of buttheads. I Loads probably even missed a couple. Wow. <laughs> it was pretty great. The, the basic idea of this last part is that they discover, the Martians discover that the ship, their ship, is going to blow up in like a half an hour. And they have to get to the ship and take off or the entire world is going to be destroyed. And this time they don't have the DOD to save them from the destruction of the Earth. It's yeah. it's a race against the clock. Yeah. yeah. So they they release the farm and, zoid. And, 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 and let me stop you there, Jay, because you say it's a race against the clock, and believe me, you feel every minute of that race against <laughs> the clock. I remember what happens after Farmazoid, but I don't remember the Farmazoid. <laughs> you only see it for, like, it's only on screen for just a little bit. It's like a giant tractor robot thing that... It's got some, like, those little windmill, wind vane sort of things spinning around, make it look all threatening, yeah. and that's... It's, like, huge. It's it's like a battle mech. Yeah. Bo it's like 50 but feet a tall. farm gear. 
Both times this was beamed into my brain, I must have, like, been looking at my space phone or something. Because, <laughs> because I don't recall literally anything about this. Yeah, the Martians are trying to get their ship and get out of here. The townspeople are closing in. The, the farmzoid shows up, and then we get Vern screaming, Hey, Clenbeather! Laugh now, Butthead! <laughs> <laughs> Still don't remember Butthead. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, it's a, there's a real Butthead theme. So the sheriff and Jack and Kathy are everybody's working on the ship. How is Clembecker, Chris, or I'm sorry, not Clembecker? How is Wrenchmuller gonna help the aliens take off? Because they need a little, they need a little boost to get up boost. into the atmosphere. They had Clem. <laughs> we saw earlier on that uh, old man Wrenchmuller has a big crate of dynamite. And yeah. I don't know about you guys, but have you guys ever, like, you know, loaded up a garbage can upside down with some dynamite and watched it fly into the air while blowing up your own goddamn house and uh, killing your family? <laughs> because you old know? man Wrenchmuller has, and that's his plan for getting the ship into orbit. Can we also just point out what a real butthead Wrenchmuller <laughs> really is <laughs> throughout this whole movie? Oh, this, yeah. this entire movie... Okay, he wants to save the farm. He's an old man who wants to save the farm. That's fine. But he want, first he wants to take pictures of the Martians and then destroy them. Well, I think because... So that he has the only photos. Well, I think because now, he wants to sell them so he can save his farm. Yes, that's his so, ultimate yeah. motivation. It's very but selfish. But he's willing to kill intergalactic beings that they know now are innocent. And it was a mistake and no one died. He wants to kill them just so he can have money to save his farm. I mean, it's kind of a... Well, I think, I think I think all of us would make that decision. It's either, okay, I'm evicted from my farm, or I'm gonna have to kill some, you know, let's face it, pretty dumb aliens. Except for Jack. But Bill. you don't have to kill them, is the thing. Mm, well... Uh, yeah, well, well here's, here's the thing. You say they're innocent. They are not innocent, sir. They have not complete. Uh, okay, there's property damage. No, no, they I have will a, acknowledge. They have attempted murdered the entire planet of Earth. <laughs> that's that's a lot of attempted uh, murders. Yeah, you can't just you can't I just guess. ignore that DOD incident where I mean they were willing to destroy everything. I would argue they are the buttheads. Oh, mm, the alien buttheads. So okay, so. W we haven't seen a whole lot of the the evil enforcer drone that now shows up, who is the real bad guy, who really will kill everybody. <laughs> yes. How do they defeat this thing? They give it an award for being great. I mean, that seems like a very reasonable plan. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, they, what? They bribe him. They bribe. So Wrenchmuller bribes the uh, enforcer drone. Uh, he's, he's, he's like, oh, hey, you're the best galactic space being or whatever. Uh, let me let us give you a special award, and he gives him this cool. It's like a baton um, that looks really good, and then it's got a cool sparkler part on the top of it Ooh. that he like. Oh yeah, he he turns that on. He switches that on for for the for the drone, and it gives him this really cool award, and it's that's how he wins. And then the 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 drone says thank you, and is very flattered, and then uh, goes home and lives happily ever after. Yep, movies up. No. Yep, that's it. Oh, Actually, no? you know, you know, Mike, the way you described it, it sounds like that award sounds suspiciously like a stick of dynamite. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, why? Mm. What? No, no. Wait a minute. No. I don't know what to say. You can just uh, say your prayers. He goes boom. He does go boom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we get the, the countdown. The Martians are no longer going to be killed by the drone once they get to space. Because he was very upset with them. He was ready oh, yeah. to just kill them. Like, get us off the planet, then you're all dead. But now it's just a matter of getting off the planet. So Because the ship is still going to explode and kill the planet. Right. So yeah. they they light the giant pile of dynamite. It's a little too heavy. They've got to lighten the load. Dump all the poop. But yeah, they, they dump their shit out to go up into the air. <laughs> so that, that's how the movie ends. That's like the end of the movie. Sort of. Sort of. Well, they, yes. It's a giant, like, cloud of neon green poop. That green poop! <laughs> <laughs> over all of 
uh, wrench mueller's crops, right? And they escape into the air. And we should point out, just for the kids that are listening to this episode, oh boy, that turn it off, that, kids, turn it off. <laughs> that Jack throws Jurassic Park Kathy a communication device because oh, yeah. she was very upset that she was going to lose her friend, the little drone. Next morning, everybody, like the Martians, are gone. Clem Becker, that butthead, comes to <laughs> claim Wrench Mueller's farm. Does he get the farm? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow, though, Clem Becker must have accepted the debt in giant green beans. But the old man Wrenchmuller has an entire field of alien fertilized giant green beans. So the glowing neon poop hits the green beans, and overnight, overnight. they become 12 foot tall green beans. Yes, that's a lot of green bean. Do they say that's... green beans in the movie? No, no, I don't think kinda, so. They just kind of look like green beans. It's probably really soy. It's probably are. soybeans. Not, not to yeah. be picky. I'm just I'm in my brain. Like, do they say green beans, or are they like, like, geographically make sense? Because soy is like a huge product in Illinois. So I imagine it's well, probably soy. Yeah. Well, it could have been. When you were so, traveling through Big yeah. Bean last, Mike, did you notice that there were a lot more soybean fields? Uh, well, there was a there was one specifically taller one. Yeah. Well, it's got to be one or the other because the name is Big yeah. Bean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I, it I have to say, I was just... now, that, now that you mentioned it, the last time I was home, I did see a lot of tofu restaurants. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, okay. Some big old blocks of tofu. <laughs> and the, uh, the last scene of the film is the aliens flying back through space and Captain Bipto, always wanting to fight somebody, starts yeah. talking about torturing prisoners and the other aliens tell him to shut up. Good for them. Rating time. Uh, Paul, why don't you... Oh. oh. oh he's dead. Too soon, Sorry. Jay. Too it was, soon. It was a reflex. It was a reflex. It's oh. fair. We are going to rate this movie in Donuts of Destruction. I oh. thought you were going to pick Big Beans. Chris, what do you? how many DODs do you give this All thing? right. Well, you know, this movie clearly aimed for kids. Doesn't quite hold up for adults. I think it was about half an hour too long. Because just when I thought it was going to be over... Nah, uh There were some pretty cool characters, you know, as much as I like to laugh about it, I did like the Jack Nicholson impersonator. It was pretty cool. And Vern was nice. And, I, you know, we didn't even get a chance to talk about uh, Clem Becker's girlfriend, the mummy girl, who was amazingly <laughs> committed to her role the entire movie. Yes. <laughs> really, and Vern's love interest. And Vern's we love never really interest, talked really. about We didn't that. talk about it. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm really torn on it. It wasn't... A really great, enjoyable, bad movie, but it wasn't really, really bad either. I mean, there there were some bits that were a lot of fun. The Farmsoid was cool, Vern, you know that stuff. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go sixty donuts of destruction. Spooky. Sorry, can I say it again? <laughs> Six sixty donuts of destruction. That was even terrible. spookier. Yeah, even spookier. That was terrible. Anyway, six. You want to do it again? No, you I'm try good. Again? You're good? Okay. I'm good. Six. Mike? Um, oh, boy. Okay. So, I think I would enjoy this movie if I had a child with me who enjoyed it. Like, if if they liked it, there might be some sort of a delight that was happening, and I could get on board <laughs> with that. But it just couldn't keep my interest. I, I couldn't pay attention to this thing. Uh, hmm. There's, there's, and you tried, right? No, I, tried I watched it twice. Yeah, I mean, or it was beamed in my head twice. Uh, right, of course. Because that's because we're on a spaceship, and you know, you know, we don't know what's going on. Um, but I, I couldn't. I just couldn't, man. It, it, <laughs> I like a kids' movie, dude, but like, I couldn't do it. Uh, so my initial, my initial amount was forty. Oof. But. There were apparently a bunch of butthead jokes that I might have appreciated <laughs> if I could have paid attention. So I'm going to lift up the score a little bit. I'm going to say 50 buttheads. Wow. 50 buttheads. I cannot okay. believe I like this movie more than Mike. Right in the middle of the road. Okay. For me, yeah. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like I'm watching it and I'm like, yeah, there are some... I have this weird... Like, I'm pulled in two different directions. Like, I'm... I do understand that some of it feels slow. 
But at the same time, as I'm taking notes, I'm like, this thing cuts around really quick, and there's a lot of different scenes going on. So that's why I made the comment about the pacing. So it's it's weird. Um, but yeah, I did watch this as a kid, and so there is that little nostalgia factor, you know, like, you know, Chris has his nostalgia thing. Oh, you're uh, loud for the nostalgia. Loads of it. Yeah, I, I felt a little bit of that. Um, so I did have some fun with this. So I think some fun is going to equate to uh, 65 donuts of the destruction. Yeah, all, right. all right, all right. Which I, th- <clears throat> I still feel much better about this. You know, I, I don't want to go on about it much, but I really hated Monster Mash. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, Monster Mash was bad. <laughs> oh, I just, I just hated that. So, uh, you know, yeah. I, I enjoyed it a lot, a lot more. Um, so yeah. So, um, well, this was interesting, guys. Um, yeah. Mike, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about uh, some of the off-season content that we have coming up? Because sure, uh, we don't have like a proper next time on thing, no. but we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, okay, so, like, you know, we're taking a little time off to not do full episodes. We're going to do some fun off-season content. I think this really, like, really lets us breathe with some weird shit, too, which I really like about the off-season. So, what we've got coming up is we've got some shorter, quick-take type things where we pair off and we just do two-people type stuff, uh, including coming back paul's gonna be back for me and him to do another conspiracy oh, no, theory really? video <laughs> yeah oh, oh. Uh, ghost paul ghost well why paul did you a... why did we need to do a seance for him if you are because i need him to come to back him. for this i don't know how to find him i gotta somehow get him back all right all right Fair uh enough. and hopefully jack parsons will help me um <laughs> but uh yeah no so we're gonna do some stuff like that uh, i know we've got a handful of uh late afternoon of the living dead content which is a movie that we were all involved with jay wrote and directed and you know Chris started yeah. in, and we all worked on it. Let me tell you guys. Let me let me just tell the listeners. It's going to be the most utterly pretentious thing you've ever heard. <laughs> oh yeah, it's going to be sick. It's going to be so sick. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is a bunch of stuff. Uh, we're going to do another B movie, which is what me and a B expert do. We sit down and watch a movie about bees. So <laughs> we're going to do that again. Uh, there's going to be a, a bunch of fun stuff. A bunch of weird fun stuff that is. Uh, off format uh, of sorts. Yeah. So it'll be good. Uh, Chris, uh, what about things people can do if they want to uh, support or follow the podcast? Well, Mike, they can buy a t shirt, two different designs, <laughs> and a variety of colors and styles. <laughs> Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, that's it. No, iTunes. If you know, if you're listening to this on on like the website, we get a lot of listens on the website, which is fantastic. And thank you for listening. Um, but if you want an easier way to listen, we could. This can get sent right to your phone, which you know, just go onto iTunes or Stitcher or whatever podcast app you may have, and and just search B Movie Mania. It's right there. Pops in. Subscribe. Every every episode will just get sent right to your phone, and you can just check it out that way. And it's super easy. If you've already done all that stuff and you like it and you're like, hey, how can I help these guys a little bit? Well, you could give us a good rating on any of your various podcasting machines or, you you know, give us some stars, give us some kind words. You know, that kind of thing boosts us in uh, all of those algorithms and those machines that uh, rank podcasts and then more people find us and more people enjoy it. And then we feel good about doing these episodes and the fact that we're all staring at each other and, you know, it feels very small to us, but you can really help us, help us interact with us. We love it. Yeah, they may not let us off this alien ship without a decent enough rating, so we'll see what happens here. That's the next thing. I don't even know how we get off this thing. No, me either. Or at least send us an email because we would like to talk to someone. And Mike's got the email address. <laughs> yeah, bmoviemaniapodcast at gmail.com this is a whole long thing isn't it <laughs> this uh, is real big we got at at BMM podcast on twitter uh, bmoviemania on instagram I think I don't fucking know uh, hey well, tell you what Mike why don't you just keep talking about stuff like this I'm gonna run down this weird Martian alien spaceship hallway and try to find a way out of here okay uh, <laughs> you can I'm also, just gonna sit in the corner if you need me alright uh, you can also go to uh, uh, Amazon.bmoviemania.com and there's that. Uh, Jay, how is it looking? Okay, Jay. Jay's. No. Uh oh. Jay? 
Bye, Mike. See sure. you later. Yep, Chris. See ya. Chris, wait, I think Jay found a way out. Let's go follow Jay. Let's go see where Jay went. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, See you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Guys, we've got a Cody Dots new line.